Okay. Is it recording? Yep. Okay, because I don't have the visual clue here. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. So this is the uh, so-called EMEA GSOC uh, office hour meeting where we meet to uh, discuss any open questions, doubts that we have related to the Jenkins Google Summer of Code. Uh, I believe we have two topics for uh, today. First, a general one that we have every time on uh, the agenda. It is any questions from uh, potential contributors, questions going on. And uh, more specifically, are there any questions about creating and publishing a preliminary uh, contribution proposals? So to start, just to know um, uh, the, the who we're dealing with. So around the table, we have uh, Chris, who is uh, one of the org admin, very active. He's located in Hong Kong time zone. Uh, we have uh, Mark who joined, who is in the mountain region of the United States. So early morning for him. Good morning, Mark. And then, so I am uh, Jean-Marc Mason uh, and I'm located in Brussels, uh, Belgium and I'm an org admin. So we have uh, three other attendees in the group. So we have uh, Vihan, uh just to locate uh so you're probably in india and uh, give us a couple of words who where yes. what uh so i am in india and i am from uh maharashtra pune but i'm currently in my college campus in indore which is in madhya pradesh state okay and uh you intend to submit a proposal uh, yes, you could expect the draft within a day or two. I'm almost done with that. Okay, good. Uh, just going around the table, we have also Adita, Ad, Aditya. So I, I'm sorry if I butchered the, the names of first names. I try my best. And I hope at <laughs> no. the end of the summer, I'll get it right. Go ahead, Aditya. No, no problem, John. I'm Aditya. I was a Google Summer of Code student last year. So this year I've volunteered to be a mentor for one of the projects. Um, okay. uh, this is my first official Google Summer of Code Jenkins meeting that I've joined. And uh, yeah, I've, I'll be happy to answer any questions that any contributors have. So I'll also be willing to do uh, some reviews of the proposal. And from org admins and Mark, uh, I, I'll uh, request you all to help me and guide me. How can I help others better? That's why I'm here. Okay. Very good, very nice to, to meet you virtually. And uh, thank you for uh, um, helping us uh, in this adventure and working together. My uh, pleasure. We, <laughs> we have also uh, Diraj, uh, oh, yeah, Diraj uh, on the call. Uh, now I fear, I have a, well, okay, can you talk? Raj? Yes, John. You, you're not the one attending the course. Uh, I didn't get you, sorry. <laughs> no, there was Hello? somebody who planned to attend uh, the, the, the meeting, but was just going to listen uh, because he was attending a, a, a course at the same time. So go ahead, Raj. Who are you? Where are you? And what is your interest? Sure. So I'm Dheeraj and I am currently working with Red Hat as Associate Software Quality Engineer. And I'm working from um, Navi Mumbai, which is in India. And uh, why I'm here is because I wanted to, you know, just, I'm interested in one of the GSOX project called plugin health score and another one for screenshot automation and uh, just here discuss about that 
and uh, yes that's the main thing and also to listen about what others have to offer here as well so thanks for the opportunity okay great thank you for for joining and thank you for your interest Dranj. well I, at the end i will get it right okay and i see we have a last uh, uh attendee here i think it's it said yiming gong so do you hear us and could you tell us who you are where are you located and what is your interest you mean i i fear you either you did not understand us or you're on mute or unable to talk okay Never mind. You can chime in and eventually join with uh, with the chat. Welcome aboard. Thank you for for your interest. Uh, uh, old. Okay, I'll I'll move on on the discussion. I will jump for the 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 second agenda and item, and then open up the discussion. So, from what I've seen, uh, people don't have issues or find out a way to create and publish preliminary contribution uh, uh, proposals. So are there questions on that subject, difficulties or any doubts on that subject? So John Mark, I am delighted that we've had several already post to community.jenkins.io with their Google Doc. And now I'm a little embarrassed. I haven't done the reviews yet. So I haven't, I've, I've got to get started on the reviews, but but I've seen that they've been posted and that's good. That's really, really good. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I wanted, and this was in fact the first thing I wanted to say, but thank you for chiming in on, on that, Mark. So we have already a couple. Uh, they're good, and it, it there is also a confirmation that it's worthwhile to share uh, these presentations so that we have a first look uh, at them. So I started looking at several of them. I encourage everybody around the table here uh, to read them and do comments, uh, either um, contributor or mentor, read the documents and any fresh eye on it will help the people to make a better and stronger uh, proposal. So it starts to look good. Uh, a, a general comment that I have seeing it from, from uh, the outside, be careful on the structure of your document. So uh, it will make the document more easily to, uh, more easy to read and more powerful so take care otherwise uh, continue like that and encourage everybody to uh, to review add comment if you're not familiar when you have a google doc document there is on the right a small um, uh, plus uh, no i'm editor from that document here it does not work there's a small a uh, plus point that will appear when you select something. Yeah, there. Uh, and now it is a French speaking uh, browser. I apologize for that. So when you click here, you can open up here a small window where you type your comment related uh, to uh, the, the text that you highlighted. So this is the way to comment and say something uh, on a given document. Are there questions related to uh, creating these documents to uh, uh, publish them or uh, whatever? So I believe uh, that uh, Currently, there are no pending uh, questions. I've seen the people managing and, and going ahead quite well, so this is very pleasing. Don't hesitate to post questions on 
uh, either community jenkins.io or on the Gitter channels ask and we're now in a very important process where uh, we need to steer ideas and, and get creativity going. So that was an important point I wanted to do. So now I'll open up the discussion. Any questions, comments, doubts on any subject? So I see that Diraj has put a, a question into the document that I yeah. might offer as a, as a candidate to use a technique. So Diraj's question was, how do we do data collection phase in a scalable way for the plug and health score idea? I wonder if we ought to use a technique with the plug-in health score idea similar to what we just tried with automated maintenance of Git caches. Um, what I did was I hosted a one-hour brainstorming session around that, around that project idea, automated maintenance of Git caches, and we had four or five of us. Chris Stern joined and two or three candidates joined. We recorded it and it gave us a chance to talk about all sorts of things in that one hour. Uh, doing a brainstorming session. I wonder, Diraj, would you be interested in that kind of a one-hour brainstorming session with the, the people who are doing plug-in health score idea, similar to what, what was done with the Git caches idea? Diraj, if you want to speak, don't forget to unmute. Well, it's okay just to type the answer too, or or maybe what I should offer is let me let we could discuss it in the Gitter channel if if that feels interesting. I felt I felt personally that the brainstorming session we did was quite useful. It was useful to me as a Git maintainer to think about what should this be, and I think the the potential contributors, the potential participants, found it useful as well because it let them offer their ideas and get suggestions and have good conversations about what does this mean and what does that mean? So we, we did a one hour exercise around that document. Yeah, so I, I second that idea. I'm going to uh, repeat it on the Gitter channel and uh, get that uh, organized because I think it's a good proposal. So, so Chris, any insights from you there in terms of were there things we should do differently in that brainstorming exercise or that we, we I, I know you were there and you were an active participant. Thanks very much for being so. Um, I think maybe we could structure it a little bit more. So it's like prepare some kind of like um, specific topics, subtopics to discuss before. Okay, good point. How do we gather subtopics by questions on the Gitter or? Yeah, I guess like, I see some like so quite a lot of questions asked on Gitter, especially about um, the automated maintenance of Git caches. So make a summary of them as a starting structure for the brainstorm. Um, it's like, um, yeah. Okay, it sounds like a good proposal. Okay. okay. Other questions, topics to discuss? Don't forget that we, we do a particular, uh, uh, we, we have particular attention uh, that we record these sessions so that everybody can either go back to what has been said uh, or watch it if he was not able to attend because of time zones or availability. Uh, there are other... Um, I had a question about the document template. So in that we have a section that says that note the dates and GSO timelines take precedence over this document and there is timeline with the details of that provided. So I was wondering whether that is just for our information or uh, do we have to fill in stuff with that? So because we have a proposed schedule, that's a different headline, a different heading in, in that we have to write a schedule. So I was wondering what that headline, what the above section was about. 
Uh, the line was poor, so I'm going to try to rephrase it, but it will probably be uh, uh, wrong. So the, the question was about uh, the, the uh, contributor's proposed timeline uh, to, uh, to do his project. So the, could he come with an other proposal than the one than the default one presented in the document. Did I rephrase that correctly, or uh, can you? Uh... Uh, no, actually, I, I, is it is my voice clear now? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I meant to say that uh, above the proposed schedule section, uh, there is uh, there are some points related to which phase has to do with what. So what what is expected from that? There are some open-ended questions also in that para. So I was wondering what that was about. So are we supposed to answer those questions or is that just for providing us some insight into uh, creating the proposed schedule, uh, writing under the proposed schedule heading? Okay, I'm going to, can somebody start answering? Um, I think those are just suggestions. You can come up with like other questions and answer them yourselves. Like if if you think they'll help us to um like to like see how your timing is going to be like. Right. Anyway. This is what I uh, wanted to say. Where is the document? Same thing. Bullet item three. Use the project proposal template. I think. Uh, In application steps, yeah. There it is. Okay, so uh, what is, so I, I give it my uh, my shot at it. So where is it? Is this, is this the oh, section yeah, you're section. referring to? Yeah, okay. Yes. Now, uh, some of these dates are fixed deadlines. So these we cannot move because they're set by uh, Google. Uh, other uh, phases and the content uh, of it. So, so what you're putting in what phase and so, or if you need to plan a, a holiday or something like that, this is the place where uh, you would mention it. So to come back to the initial question, this is for information, rephrase it. So, um, uh, it, this is just for guidance uh, and, and come with your own proposal. Have a look also to how the others uh, filled in uh, the, the their proposal, the temporary mm -hmm. proposal now, how they did. But this is just a reminder of what we're expecting. So the start is fixed, coding begins, which is um, uh, June thir uh, 13th. There is the intermediate evaluation, but I think this can, I need to look at the, the exact rules, but this can be shifted around. And the, the end, the final evolution, evaluation on uh, beginning of September. These are fixed, but this is just for a reminder. So you don't need to repeat all that. This is just uh, noise say there what's important for you. For instance, I need to leave for two weeks because uh, uh, I don't know, going to marry or whatever. <laughs> well, I have important examples. Right. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah, so actually the reason why I had was I looked at a couple of propo a couple proposals and the one by Rishikesh, in, in, in that uh, this section was absent. So uh, yeah. from the note, the bold line to the proposed schedule, the content between it was absent. So yeah. I was wondering perhaps if that is just for our reference. Yeah. So in this template, uh, these are placeholders or there are a lot of placeholders uh, in it and give you hints. There's no need to keep them if there is no added uh, a value. Just leave it as a reminder or the title but you need to add your own information because we're going to read this chunk, for instance, if everybody leaves it, we're going to read that 15 or 20 times. 
and, and there is no added value. Put there what is critical for your or important for your proposal. Yeah, so so I, I would argue that the start date is important, right? Even though it's, it's standard, the end date is important. The the uh, assessments, I think there's a midpoint assessment, right? Yeah, and at least one mid, and those are important because those are given by Google and absolutely include those, but then refine, yeah. as John Mark said, with your own dates down to like a, a week by week, if you can compose your project into week by week plan. Yeah. What we want to see is I'm going to start with that. I expect it to take that amount of effort and time, then I will do that, or that we see the structure and how you're going to attack your uh, your project. This is what we want to see. Right, thank you. Good question. Other questions, comments? Yes, just wanted to add one thing. So first of all, I'm really sorry for last time when Mark was answering and I was disconnected due to network issues. So sorry for that. And uh, yes, uh, Mark replied with a suggestion to host a one hour brainstorming session. So that's really helpful. So uh, I have some questions. So, and I am in the process of making the proposal. So. I would need to first of all write them down in in a centralized place. Then I will be taking them those questions to the brainstorming session. So that way it would be more um, organized. So that, so thanks for the idea. I'll uh, ask the mentors on the Gita channel for the timings and whenever they're available. Just want okay. to add that. Uh, another technique you can use is eventually if you have many questions is create a small Google Doc document uh, and link that document into the Gitter channel so that we have a list that we can work. Uh, but Gitter is perfect. So this is lightweight and just ask and we're going to copy them. But if you come with 20 questions and you need drawings and so well, start a small document and this can be the base uh, for, for that. I plan to move uh, quickly. Uh, I'm going to ask on Gitter also, what is the appropriate time zone for it? Uh, will probably be around this time. So uh, that uh, China and India is, is well served hearing from the audience, but I'm going to check that on Gitter. Awesome, thank you so much. Good. So, Diraj, we've got a few minutes here. If you've got questions you want to answer, ask now, John Mark is one of the candidate mentors for Plug-in Health Score. So yep. you are certainly welcome to ask them now as well. Don't, don't be shy about asking a question yeah. now. Yes, sure. So, um, so the data, I'm sorry about the background noise. <laughs> Dogs are crazy here. So about the data collection phase, it's mainly, I've noticed that the main thing there is to scrape the pom.xml file of each plugin and uh, collect what the current value they have and try to compare it with what is the expected latest value that they should be having. And accordingly, try to find out and maybe calculate the score. So that's what I was able to understand. So correct me if I'm wrong. So and you're I, mm -hmm. you're hundred yeah. percent on it. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so the one way I try to do it is by using regex and trying to traverse the whole um, XML structure of the pom.xml and just try to get the value of let's say Jenkins base version, and then. I compare it with the latest, uh, the two recommended ones. And if so, that's the whole process I'm following for few, a few of them. And uh, I'm like wondering like where would we be storing these things? Because eventually we want to 
uh, display them on let's say plugins site uh, whenever a user clicks on a score of a plugin they want to know like how why is this plugin has this much score where are the improvements so there we need to list right uh, uh, this 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 things needs to be improved so that data will be uh, uh, displayed on ui from some database so can we can you give me some like basic rough idea on that um uh, Mark, do you want me to rephrase this the question statement? Or well, I, actually, I was gonna I was gonna invalidate one of the assumptions. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay if I no, if go I, ahead, if Mark? I be so bold as to invalidate an assumption? So, Diraj, we we really like static websites, and because we really like static websites, and I mean we really, 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 really like static websites. So and plugins, it's based on experience, right? Hard experience. Plugins.jenkins.io is actually a static website, and so so it's generated by reading all sorts of data sources. But ultimately, the thing that's that's generated is written to disk and used as a static website. And so so the the data capture, the data collection thing, is actually not time critical that it must be lightning fast to respond with answers to to queries because yes if it's if it's painfully slow it will slow down the generation of the site but not the rendering of the site to the user who's reading because the site that's rendered to the user is static so it's using fixed pages that were generated uh, based on the results of those queries so in terms of does it need to be a particularly scalable way to query I don't think so. We can we can store in a standard database and we could store in, in plain text files if that makes sense. Does that does that address your question by by skipping the question or have I misunderstood? Yes, it does. Um, it gives me some things to think about and go forward with that. So uh, another question on that, like to collect the data for each plugin. I have, let's say I have written some functions which check the value, current values of it. So let's say if you want to check the current, uh, um, the current, not the current. So if I want to run the Maven update version parent, uh, the command. So as suggested by you, Mark, like weeks ago, I should able to, first of all, run it and then try to see what is the difference uh, between the versions. And uh, and before that, I'm really sorry. Like the my questions are not organized because I should have written down written them down somewhere. But what I'm trying to say here is, for each plugin, how do I run commands for it? Like, should I do a git clone and then run the Maven commands and try to see what is the difference that this command is created and accordingly rate the plugin? But doing git git clone on all of them would be a little difficult, time consuming. It, it, it the, the simple approach that you suggested is the one I would use initially. I, right. I admit it. Yes, it assumes you've got high bandwidth. It assumes you, and you probably want to do small mockups with a relatively few plugins rather than starting with all, all 1,800. But, but I, the simple approach you described is one that I would use. Now, there are ways with the GitHub APIs to query yeah. the contents of files. So you can, you could, if all you needed was the content of the palm.xml file, you could query that. Yeah. But, but if you need to actually perform a compilation, then you really need the source code for that. And the git clone is a simple way to do it. Yeah, I would, I would go uh, first with the cloning path and using the, the GitHub API is optimization. So trying to find out ways where you don't need to clone because this can be expensive uh, uh, for, for some, some projects. But I would use that, that process. If it works with a Git clone, uh, in a second iteration, you can look at how can I optimize and win time uh, if, if the complete process turns out to be too expensive. Now on, on, 1, on 1,800 plugins, but it's an interesting dimension. But, uh, I would use that that method. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, 
So I'll go with first of all brute force as maybe we can say it that way. So git clone and then try to optimize it later with GitHub APIs. So thanks a lot. Sorry, John, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, I was asking Mark that uh, for the second iteration of the health plugin, like the same uh, case Dheeraj is discussing, I was asking Mark whether it is possible to use some API for our JFrog artifact for instance, because all plugins would be available there, right? So if we can somehow get the metadata from there, so we can skip cloning as well as uh, reading through GitHub APIs. You have a good and point there. The, the, well, and there are, it's a good point, and there are compromises that you're choosing one versus the other. So the, the plugins.jenkins.io site actually does read palm.xml files from Artifactory. The limitation is what that's showing you is only released versions. And sometimes plugins have evolved quite a bit since their last released version. And what you want to answer is not the health of the last released version. You want to know the health of the tip of the current primary branch. So, so I, absolutely, repo.jenkinsci.org repo is a good place to read released information. Good point. Mark, this point could be challenged. Uh, are we going to take the health of a given release? Or the health is it uh, for the plugin as a whole? Oh, uh, good question. I, I think that's a that's an open oh. question, and I'm willing to have that. We've, we've sort of run out of time, but I love to have that conversation yeah. because I think that's a worthwhile conversation, and it highlights an interesting question. Yeah, it's it's a functional uh, question worthwhile to to discuss, and the strategy can be different. So, here we're we're running out of time uh, here. Uh, I thank you for the question and interactions. Uh, thank you, Mark, for for chiming in and and uh, giving uh, your, all these details. Uh, one action point that I take uh, on me is to get the uh, uh, brainstorm session about plugin health uh, going and uh, want to organize it as soon as possible. Uh, and, and the aim is somewhere in next week to have that going. So uh, I will start the process uh, on Gitter uh, ASAP. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Don't hesitate, uh, recommendations, read other people's um, uh, temporary uh, proposals and honestly comment them, we all learn from the process, uh, everybody uh, being uh, uh, mentors, uh, 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 people that did con contributors. Second thing, we organize brainstorm. If there is a need or interest for other brainstorm sessions, just let us know. And uh, we want uh, to have uh, as much help as you, uh, as you can. And, uh, See you all either online or during the next uh, meeting then. I wish you a nice rest of the day to everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Cheers.